greetings to all of you in today's session we are going to start with the intermediate chemistry these are the uh, content this is the content which is extracted from the international floor national level india and the state level telangana andhra pradesh competitive exams in the level of 11th and 12th standard so this can be helpful for uh, international any competitive examination if you are appearing, appearing for and the national level JE advanced JE mains need chemistry and also Telangana state MZ chemistry Andhra Pradesh MZ chemistry this kind of preparation will be very much helpful in addition if you are uh, seriously aspiring for any competitive examination any government job examination in that condition also it will be very much helpful let's enter into our today's concept Question number one, name the following bicyclic compound as per IUPAC protocol. IUPAC stands for International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry. As per IUPAC, this is the compound given uh, is the bicyclic one. For this bicyclic compound, we have to assign its uh, name as per IUPAC protocol. So here four options are provided. Among all, the right answer will be bicyclo 4, 3, 0, no need. This will be the correct answer. Let's see how can we explain, how can we justify this will be the answer for the IUPAC name of the compound, right? So if you observe the entire compound, it is made up of two ring systems. One is six-membered ring system. In either five-membered ring system will be there. And both got fused at the position one in sixth position entirely we consist of nine carbons nine carbon parent chain will be assigned as nonane right nine carbon chain will be nonane and uh, later on we have to go for both the rings okay how many atoms are laying in the first ring so uh, excluding this bridged carbon atoms wherever fusion is there those carbon atoms should be excluded first only the free carbon atoms to be considered one, two, three, four. Okay, the six membered ring is consisting four carbon atoms over there. So that let me mention bicyclo being it is two ring systems so that bicyclo will be taken. And further in the square bracket, the atoms joining can be taken over here. Right In the six-membered ring, four free carbons are available and the five-membered ring consisting three free carbon atoms. So that four comma three. Uh, later on, we have to go for fused rings, fused carbon atoms. Fused carbon atoms are not having any in-between carbons. So that in between these, uh, these fused carbon atoms, zero atoms are there. So that it is mentioned as four stands for atoms present in six-membered. 3 stands for atoms present in 5 membered and 0 there is no extra carbons or extra atoms in this fused system in the fused carbon atom so that it will be mentioned with 0 and parent chain will be assigned with the 9 carbon so that no name the exact name for the given compound by cyclo 4 comma 3 comma 0 no name is the name as per the IPAC protocol move on to question number 2. In the question number two, covalent molecule Q. Q is given over here and it contains only six, six shared electrons. Six shared electrons are present that consist of three bonds. Three covalent bonds will be there. We have to find out what will be Q, right? Ammonia is given, chlorine is given, methane is given, water is given. So this is in accordance with the Cambridge International Education System. And here, all these molecules are the part of covalent system only. All are consisting covalent bonds during their formation. We have to identify which is having six shared electrons in that given compound. For that purpose, let's consider this ammonia molecule. Ammonia is of sp3 hybridized nitrogen containing three hydrogens three hydrogens with three sigma bonds each bond is made by the two shared electrons fine so here two four six electrons are in a covalent bond formation for ammonia and more two electrons are resided which are non-bonding we can assign it as a lone pair right so this ammonia molecule will be the right answer because within the question they mentioned the six shared electrons are required. That answer is given in the option number one itself where uh, it is having three lone pairs, three shared electron pairs over there. 
for covalent bond formation. Three paired electrons, nothing but six shared electrons are there in the covalent bond formation. So that ammonia will be the correct answer. Let's consider remaining molecules, remaining covalent molecules also. And either one is given as chlorine. If you considered chlorine, it is the diatomic molecule. Both the homoatomic chlorines got joined with the one bond. One bond means the two electrons. So how many? Two electrons only present and remaining all are lone pairs only. Each chlorine is accompanied with the three lone pair of electrons and two shared electrons will be assigned for this chlorine molecule so that it is not the correct answer. Move on to next one, methane. Again, methane is also sp3 hybridized carbon where carbon is accompanied by four hydrogen atoms with the four covalent bonds. Four bonds denoted with the uh, shared electrons like this so that if you count to two plus two plus two plus two total eight electrons are participating in tetrahydral methane molecule formation that's the reason why shared electron pairs are eight we need only six that's why it may not be the right answer but it is the tetrahedral molecule with the four covalent bonds accompanied by eight shared electrons for covalent bond formation called a methane four pairs are uh, present in this Move on to last molecule called water. It's a bent molecule. Again, oxygen is of sp3 hybridized one where two, share, two covalent, covalently bonded hydrogens are uh, present over here so that we can say four shared electrons are present and two lone pair of electrons also present. Two lone pairs are available over here. This is about water. Among all the given options, the correct one is ammonia where Three covalent bonds accompanied by six shared electrons. For question number two, option number A is the correct answer. Move on to question number three. Question number three is uh, given from 2023 uh, JE advanced question paper. The correct molecular orbital diagram for fluorine molecule in the ground state is. In fluorine molecule, what will be the right order of filling? right so if you see the fluorine each fluorine is having 1s2 2s2 2p5 electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p5 electronic configuration to be filled in this molecular orbital diagram these many options are provided among all the correct representation will be option number c let's see how can we explain this one in detail we will see Right. If you see the fluorine molecule, valency shell configuration. Valency means outer shell configuration will be 2s2, 2p5. Right. 2s2, 2p5 will be there. 2s orbitals when joining of two uh, fluorine atoms, one bonding orbital, one anti-bonding orbital represented with the sigma bonding Sigma star bonding will be there, right? So this is the kind of representation. Two electrons will be resided in a sigma and remaining two electrons centered into sigma star orbital, right? This is about 2s orbital filling. Later on, 2p orbital contains, each fluorine 2p orbital contains five electrons. These five electrons and five electrons from another fluorine, they entered into first sigma bonding orbital where two electrons will be entered pi bonding orbital two plus two six electrons will be the total 10 electrons we need to accommodate that's the reason why first two electrons into sigma bonding orbital and the next pi bonding orbital is accompanied by four electrons pi star orbital is accompanied by four electrons this is the way filling is occurred so Always we have to move from lower energy level to higher energy level in step-by-step -step manner. This is the way. So outer shell will be pi star anti-bonding can be filled over here. That is exactly mapping with option number C. For question number three, option number C will be the correct answer. Move on to question number four. Question number four is given from organic chemistry and different reagents will be added. Upon the addition of these many reagents, what will be the output? Final product we need to predict. In order to get such kind of questions, we have to get certain idea about what reagent will proceed with which kind of reaction. Okay. So reagents are specifically reacted with the starting material so that product formation will be possible. This kind of questions will be solved by practicing many more uh, problem 
problem questions over there, right? In the following reactions, P, Q, R, S uh, are the major products. P, Q, R, S are the major products. So first of all, we have to see the starting material remains the same in all the cases, right? So we can say it is the kind of isobutyl chloride. Starting material will be isobutyl chloride. Uh, different step of reactions will be treated. Different set of reactions will be treated over there. And the product will be PQRS. And uh, from that, from this data, uh, the inference made is, the correct inference made is, P will be the primary alcohol with the four carbon atoms. We have to check out whether it is correct or not. It will be correct answer only. How it will be correct, we have to go for solving the problem. Later on, Q undergo coal base electrolysis to give eight carbon product. Always, coal base electrolysis gives rise to double number of carbon atoms by the formation. Double number. So, if we are having uh, in coal base electrolysis, always uh, decarboxylation carried subsequently. Whatever the carbon atoms, apart from the carboxylic acid, how many carbon atoms are there, that number will be doubled. So that eight carbons it should get. Eight carbons it should get means uh, starting material should contain four carbon atoms, right? So this is also the correct answer. And option C, R has a six carbons and it undergo Kanizero reaction. The condition for Kanizero reaction is alpha hydrogens must be absent, Right. So, and the six carbon containing um, product should be formed. So, that will be R. This is also correct one only. And S. S is the secondary amine with the six carbon atoms. This is also the correct answer. We have to search for the solution in order to solve this problem. It is somewhat critical and logical as well. We have to solve in a detailed manner. Let's go with the uh, solution for the question. The starting material will be isobutyl chloride. This isobutyl chloride, first of all, treated with magnesium dry ether. This is the kind of reaction. Alkyl halide, magnesium metal, dry ether solvent. This is called a Grignard reagent preparation. Right? RMGX will be prepared. Grignard reagent preparation. So that whatever, al whatever alkyl halide is there, that will be inserted with the metallic magnesium over there. Simply it is the kind of insertion. So that we will get alkyl magnesium chloride. Isobutyl magnesium chloride will be the product. Later on, hydrolysis may uh, hydrolysis reaction performed. Whenever it's subjected to hydrolysis, water will be added so that we will get hydroxy compound. This is called hydroxy. Can we say it is the primary alcohol? Absolutely. This is called a primary alcohol. What they are saying, P is the primary alcohol. That is perfectly correct. So that option one is rectified. Move on to a uh, second option where starting material remains same. That is isobutyl chloride. This isobutyl chloride treated with magnesium in the presence of dry ether, right? So again, it is the same step, no? So we will, we will generate Grignard reagent. RMGX got synthesized. Later on, carbon dioxide will be treated. Dry ether is the solvent. The hydrolysis will be carried subsequently. Uh, by adding all these reagents, what happens? This will be added to... Uh, CO2, carbon dioxide molecule, subsequent product will be carboxylation. We can generate one ascending chain, means one carbon atom got raised and moreover, it will be converted into acid. Carboxylic acid will be generated. Now the chain contains five carbons and further they treated with sodium hydroxide, no? Sodium hydroxide is the base, COOH is the acid. So that neutralization reaction, we will get the salt called sodium carboxylate. This will be the Q, product Q. What they are saying, Q undergoes coal base electrolysis to give eight carbon chain. Exactly. Why? Because in this molecule, though we are having five carbons, Upon coal base, it should be doubled. What According to our previous explanation, number of carbon should be doubled, no? So that it should become 10. But what we are saying here, 
initially it will be decarboxylated and whatever carbon chain left that will be doubled that's the reason why whenever decarboxylated means co2 eliminated when co2 eliminated leftover will be four carbons no so four carbons doubled so that number will be raised to eight carbon product this will be absolutely correct answer so this is the option number 2 option number 2 grignard reagent carbon dioxide sodium hydroxide further coal based electrolysis eight carbon chain will be formed and next is about uh, isobutyl chloride treated with magnesium in the presence of dry ether again the formation of uh, what we can say grignard reagent will be generated any grignard reagent treated with aldehyde always aldehyde reaction with grignard reagent gives a secondary alcohols always grignard reagent reaction with aldehyde gives a secondary alcohol here is the product called secondary alcohol right so when it is treated with ketone so the tertiary alcohol will be generated when it is treated with primary aldehyde that means formaldehyde that will give primary alcohol here acetaldehyde whenever treated with this uh, uh, rmgx uh, we will get secondary alcohol the secondary alcohol now treated with the chromium oxide chromium oxide is the oxidizing agent no always uh, oxidizing agent will convert uh, hydroxy into ketone being uh, chromium oxide is the oxidizing agent secondary alcohol got converted into ketonic compound what they are saying r is the six carbon and undergo kenizer reaction All right r this is the r product six carbons whether six carbons are there or not we have to check it out 1 2 3 4 5 6 carbons absolutely correct there are six carbon atoms and what about its kenizer kenizer reaction the condition is the compound the compound which uh the compound which is having no alpha hydrogens will be will participated in the kenizer reaction here ch2 will be there ch3 will be there alpha hydrogens are available okay so this six carbons containing chain will be there but the kenizer reaction may not be possible it will participate in aldol condensation because alpha hydrogens are present right and next is about option number 4 this is isobutyl chloride option number 4 is also isobutyl chloride here treated with uh, sodium nitrile any cn is called sodium nitrile whenever sodium nitrile is treated what happens chloro now simply replaced with cn we can say it is a nucleophilic substitution cl minus removed cn minus added that's it this is called nucleophilic substitution later on let's reduce addition of hydrogen in the presence of rain in nickel whenever reduction got carried carbon added with hydrogens nitrogen also added with hydrogen atoms so that it will be converted into primary amine this is called primary amine primary amine further undergo reaction with the chloroform chcl3 is called what chloroform in the presence of base called potassium hydroxide on heating this is called what carbyl amine test it is the characteristic reaction for primary amines especially primary amines will be treated by this right primary amine treated with this uh, carbyl amine reagent so that nh2 is converted into nc this is called isocyanide right isocyanide will be generated now again we are treating with the reducing agent called lithium aluminum hydride strong reducing agent further hydrolysis carried so that nitrogen added with hydrogens carbon also added with hydrogen this is called water nitrogen is having two sides alkyl hence we can say it is a secondary amine s is the secondary amine let's see s is the secondary amine with the six carbon atom this is also correct one so that all the options which ever provided for question number 4 is the exactly correct so move on to question number 
Question number five is collected from TCS ION CAE. It is a competitive exam question paper that was taken and the uh, detailed solution is provided to you. Which one of the following sequences of the cation represent increasing order of polarizing power? This is related with the covalent bond formation. In order to form the covalent bond, what kind of species are favorable? What kind of species are more favorable for the covalent bond formation, right? Polarizing power. The polarizing power of the given cation will be directly proportional to its uh, uh, sorry, inversely proportional to its size. Smaller the size, greater the polarizing power, greater the covalent bond formation, right? So, K plus is having larger size, obviously, and the calcium uh, within the same group. Second main group, we can see calcium, magnesium, beryllium size gradually decreases. That's why being beryllium plus 2 is a teeny one, smaller one, having higher power to polarize so that the right order will be K plus, calcium plus 2, Mg plus 2, and beryllium plus 2. This will be the right order. This is given in accordance with the Fasen's rule, right? So let's explain Fasen's rule summary. So smaller the cation, larger the small. If we are moving from small cation to large cation, covalent character will be decreased. Uh, if we are moving from large cation to small cation, covalent character increases. That is only proved over here. Small cation is the beryllium plus 2 so that it will be more covalent in nature. And in either, larger anion is more preferable. Small cation, larger anion, then only stronger the covalent bond. So that is very simple, fundamental for Covalent bond formation, smaller the cation, larger the anion are required. And one more thing is, whether it is cation or anion, higher the charge, greater will be the covalent nature, right? Always covalent nature increases with the greater the charge, right? So if we see potassium monopositive, calcium, magnesium, beryllium, all are dipositive. So that beryllium having two, uh, two advantages. One is tiny one, second is large charge. So that high polarizing power is accorded for beryllium, later on magnesium, calcium, and potassium. So for question number five, option number two will be the correct answer. Move on to question number six. The compound which is having pentagonal bipyramidal geometry with the two types of bond angles. Right. In order to get the pentagonal bipyramidal geometry, sp3 d3 hybridization is required. The required hybridization is sp3 d3 that is provided in IF7 molecule. And we clearly observe IF7 molecule where pentagonal bipyramidal is there. Okay. All four chlorines are in the square, and the two chl fluorines are there in the what we can say axial bonds. Whichever laying on the plane, whichever fluorines laying on the plane are called equatorial bonds and uh, these are called axial bonds. And uh, another extra fluorine being, uh, it is IF7, seven fluorines around the single iodine so that another fluorine is also accommodated. This is called pentagonal bipyramidal sp3d3 hybridization and it is a unique property of this iodine only. Neither fluorine, chlorine, bro, those kind of halogens are need, not able to generate because iodine, as we are descending uh, from top to bottom, iodine is the larger one, can accommodate seven bonds around that. That's the reason why it is more convenient to get. That is one thing we need to uh, remember. And one more is, another, another statement in this will be two types of bond angle that we have to notice over here. So if you see bond angle, the axial equatorial bond angle remains 90 degrees. Equatorial equatorial bond angle remains 72 degrees, right? So that bond angle got varied. Axial bond is having one kind of bond angle. Equatorial bonds are having another type of bond angle. And you can also observe, you can also observe axial bond is having 179 picometers bond distance. Equatorial bonds are 186 picometers bond distance. Bond angles different. Bond length is also different, which is measured in picometer units. This is the way we can explain uh, uh, geometry of pentagonal bipyramidal molecule. 
and that is clearly mentioned with the IF7 molecule, zero lone pair of electrons, all are bonded electrons, covalently bonded atoms are there. For question number six, option number four will be the correct answer. By this, we entirely completed the session. Hope this will be helpful for your preparation if we are seriously aspiring for any kind of entrance examinations or competitive exams as well. This explanation will be very much fetching for you. Uh, hope you understand the session very well. I'm sincerely requesting for like the channel, comment over here and share with the aspirants who are seriously preparing for the such kind of examinations and subscribe the channel in order to get more such kind of updates in the near future. And thank you very much for your, for your patient listening. Thank you one and all.